Picture Frames Made Easy Part 1. In this series, I'll be taking you through the basic concepts for building a picture frame. As we progress, we'll be adding other skills and techniques so that you can build any type of custom frame you'd like. Let's get started. Let's start with the easier frames to do, which would be um, this frame and the stone frame. One thing I forgot to do is just set up my size. So go over here and I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. We'll do 24 by 24. Keeping my thickness right now uh, as an inch. All right, so here we go. This is a really straightforward approach here. You take the size of your picture, which in this case, we're gonna do an eight by 10, okay? I'm gonna take this, I always like to work from the center. So we'll center that. We will then do the offset. I'll do it outwards and we're gonna keep the sharp corners. And for this, we're gonna do 1.5 inches, but of course you could always change that. Okay, so there are the vectors for our first frame. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a base model for this frame, which is just a plain base. So I select both of them. I go to modeling, create shape, and I'm just gonna keep it flat top for now. I'll apply that and close. Now, if we go into the 3D view, we could see this is just a you know plain old picture frame. All right, back to this. Now to create this, all I did was apply a texture and trim it right over the top. So what I'll do is I'll go to clip art and we're gonna start with um, textures not tileable. And you go down, here's the rock one, rock four. So if I take that, now you can see this is pretty big here. So if I look at this in the 3D view, you'll see, I mean, I'm definitely getting those textures, but what we could do is we could shrink this down and we'll rotate this by pressing nine. And then to keep it proportional, I'll pull from the corner. Let's go like that a little bit. There we go. Now, the one th nice thing about th um, this view here is you could still take this and kind of shift it around to get, you know, the rock lines where you want them. So if I wanted like the lower left corner to have a little line there or, you know, something you don't see, but essentially just get it to where you like it. Okay. Go back to my um, top view layout and I select the image or the texture, the two boundaries, and I go into modeling and then I'm gonna select clear area. It's from the outsides and it leaves me with this. Now, because we did this in two parts, we have a little bit more control. If I open up the rock texture, I can make it you know, less dramatic less detail, or you could add in more. My recommendation is to leave it at a, a medium amount because you could still adjust it a little bit later, um, but not as much as now. Once you have it the way you like it, all you really have to do is, we'll hit the Z view, and there's an option in modeling to create component from visible model. Now what happens is when you press that button, it creates a duplicate, a basically a baked duplicate. Um, so you can see here's here's a duplicate baked. It looks just like this one. The only thing is this is now considered one one piece of data. So you could go in and you could touch this up with the uh, brushes and all that. So as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward process. You could take, you could save that take this off now I'm back to just my regular frame and you could go into this clip art and you could select you know any anything you want from here I think the other one I did was the scallops so if you take that and put it over you could see you get a nice pretty cool texture like that and then the other frame I did was just essentially like this 
And I think because the frame is longer going up and down, I would rotate this. Hit that one more time. I think that might flow a little bit nicer um, with the pebbles or the scallops going up and down that way. And then, you know, same thing. Just trim, trim, select, whoop. Make sure you hold shift. And then when I go into modeling and I clear that, now this one had to be, let's see, it said that one had to be baked. There you go. So if I control Z that, what happened was that type of clip art requires baking to be put onto something. So before you bake it, or if you see that message come up, what you could do is go back to your modeling. The scallops are separated right now. You can make your adjustments if you want them to be a little bit thicker. And then you can do that same thing as before, you know, trim it and then save the model. Um, same, the same exact concept works with, you know, any shape frame that you make. So if, let's say I wanted to make an oval frame for this. If I have an eight by 10 picture, all I need to do is grab the oval tool. I'll start from the middle. I'll bring it up, bring it out. And now just your picture would just have to be snipped off. One thing you may want to do is if you have a eight by 10 picture and it's exactly eight by 10 is shrink this down a little bit. So when you cut your rabbits into the wood, you know, you'll have a little bit of overlapping um, room there to cover the picture. So, and then the same, the same thing with this. So I take this, I'll do my boundary offset outwards. Right. And then if I go into my clip art, I can go, I forget where I found the roses. Maybe it was in the fruits. Oh yeah. Panel of roses. And this one's available, um, in that set that I made. You take this, you can blow it up. If you want to keep the roses a little bit smaller, you can rotate this. Now maybe I could shrink it down a little bit. Now what I'll do is I'll check the 3D view. Whoops. What, what happened is we forgot to create our shape. So I'll go in here, modeling, create shape. Going to apply that. Now one little, oh, let's see here. Now something I'm kind of looking for is some strange stuff happening on the edges. So we might want to take the panel of roses and decrease the height a little bit. And then if you see anything funny happening, you could just basically grab this and kind of shift that around. Like, you know, if you look at the one piece, like right over here, maybe you don't want something like that on the edge. Um, so maybe on the inside edge, it's okay. And then same thing as before, you just take this, I select the vectors and the rows panel, go to modeling, and then I just trim that, whoops, and the vector's not selected. So I select that and the vector's a little hard to see. And then same thing, we just go, we're gonna hit trim. That one's gonna be baked, that's fine. And there you have a little rose style um, frame in an oval. So these are probably one of the simplest frames to make. And then in the next video, what I'll do is I have some other frames in there, um, that, you know, just a little bit more finessing, they get them in, but I think this is a good way to get started. And just a couple last thoughts here. So this first frame over here, this is, uh, you know, the stone frame, like we did in the example. The one in the middle is where we're going to be going towards next, um, where we want to build, you know, custom sized frame with different things. This one requires um, the mirroring tool and that one we're going to build up to in a couple steps. And then the third one, finally, the rim of this bowl is a two sided. We could think of it as a frame. I mean, it, it kind of is, even though it's the rim of this bowl but where we manipulate um, 3D objects to follow the curve. And also if you see here, I should have put a closer picture, but each of these Celtic knots symbols line up with each of the staves. Um, so we'll talk about, you know, laying out 
um, you know, laying out for frames that way as well. Um, so I'll try to break this out into maybe, I don't know, three, four different videos and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Take care.